Aloha everyone, this is Lenora, Hawaii's Pickle Lady. This Friday, which is, is Chinese New Year, the year of the ox. So in celebration of that, I'm going to teach you how to make go. Which is the Chinese mochi steam cake. And it's pretty easy. The way I do it, it's uh, I've been doing it for 30, 40 years, and I followed my mother's recipe, but of course I tweaked it a little bit the way I want it. So I'm gonna show you now what to use. First of all, you need what is called, like this, it's called brown candy. It's not really candy. It's sugar, slab sugar. So it comes in a package, one pound package is about two, four, about six sticks like this. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting two pounds of the slab sugar, or it's also called wong tong. Now I have here three cups of water, but I'm not gonna put it all in. Maybe about half of it, okay? I want this to melt. It'll take about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'll put it on the stove and let it cook and then stir it every so often until it's totally dissolved. So I have it on high right now and I'll turn it down later as it keeps on boiling. But you want this to melt. So it takes about 10 or 15 minutes. As long as everything is melted, then we go to the next now step. Now I'm gonna add the rest of the water, two cups of water. And, and what I wanna do is I wanna cool it off because otherwise it's hard to mix when it's hot. And then half a cup of oil. and two cans of coconut milk. Two cans. And this brand is kind of new. I usually use the Chow Ko brand, but Costco didn't have it. But they have this one that is called Thai Kitchen Organic. Pour in the second can. And it's very thick, so I like this because if you buy some of the cheaper brands, they're very watery, but this one is rich, so I like it. Okay, so this is the other can of coconut milk, and I wanted it to cool. So uh, it's cool enough that I can pour it into the flour, okay? Now I have here three pounds of glutinous rice flour. And it comes in a bag like this. So I have two cups in here, I mean two pounds already. So I'm going to add the third pound. Now when you buy this, make sure it says glutinous rice flour, not rice flour. It's not the same. There are different kinds of flour. So the Chinese name is called no mai, which is the glutinous rice. No mai fun is glutinous rice flour. So you have to use that and you only get it probably from Chinatown. Now, the mochi flour comes in loose. If you go to Chinatown, they have it in 100 pound bags and you can buy it by the pound or you can buy it like this in packages or they have it in a box called mochiko. It's a Japanese name, but mochiko is more expensive. If you go to Chinatown, the price is cheaper in a bag or loose. So you can use either one. Now I have here, three cups of coconut, fresh, um, I, I wish I had fresh coconut, but I don't, so I have some dried coconut. So I'm pouring in the three cups of coconut, and of course, if you have the luxury of having, fresh coconut is so much better, but I have no choice, so I have to use the dried one. Okay, now all I'm gonna do is pour the liquid, all that uh, sugar water and the coconut milk and water. Okay, and I'm just gonna use my hand. You have to use your hand because if you try to use a mixer, it'll be a mess. So just get it now and it's a little warm, but it's okay, but it's not hot. And that's why I had to cool off the liquid because otherwise you'll burn your hands. So you're just gonna mix it. It doesn't take long, about five minutes or so, and then Mix it up till there's no clumps and all the flour is incorporated into it. Okay, 
So now it's pretty well mixed. You can see it just took a few minutes and then it's going to be ready to pour into the pan. Now you're wondering how come it's so white, but it's amazing when you steam it. Now it has to steam for six hours, believe it or not. After that, it'll turn a nice brown. Okay. So I'm going to clean off my hands and then I'm going to show you how to line the pans with banana leaves. Okay. Now you look at this texture, it's like that, like a sort of a medium thick pancake batter. And it looks lumpy, but it's not the lumps, it's the coconut flake. So I had coconut flakes, which are bigger. And sometimes I just buy the sweetened coconut in a bag. So it doesn't matter. Or of course, if you have fresh coconut, that's really the best because I used to grate it with coconuts that I had at home. And I had a special grater for that. So. Uh, so now I'm going to show you how to line the pans. I have banana leaves here and they're very big and I can't get them fresh here in Vegas, but at home I could just go in my backyard and cut down some banana leaves. So it comes like this in big sheets and this rib here, I cut it off and I cut off the small pieces too. So this I keep frozen and it keeps very well. So whenever I want it, I can take it out. But I've already trimmed some leaves, so I'll show you how I line the pan. I've trimmed the leaves so that I don't have all the ribs in the small pieces. So what you do is uh, the right side up, you kind of line your pan like this. So you line the pan and you need several thicknesses because you don't want it to leak through. So when you take it out, it'll be contained by the leaves, okay? And if it's too wide, I just tear it. And you ha I usually make about three, four layers of leaves so that the gold won't leak out into the pan. And when you take it out, it'll be a nice piece. If you don't have access to banana leaves, you can use tea leaves if you're in Hawaii and sometimes you can buy it if you don't have it, but most people have it in the backyard, so I always had access to that. Or the other thing you could use is here, bamboo leaves, but they're very small and skinny, so you have to soak them till they're soft and use it like this, or not, if nothing else, you can use plain foil and line the pan. So the leaves, like I said, you can use other types, uh, the bamboo leaves or the tea leaves, but not wax paper or parchment. Uh, the reason why you use the leaves is you want the flavor uh, in it and it'll get a nice flavor. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to layer it with uh, maybe three or four layers of leaves. Okay, now I'm going to put the last layer of leaves on it. Now the leaves are all sticking up, but after we put the the batter in. Now I'm using a bowl to scoop in and put it in there because I can't lift up the bowl and a, a ladle is too small. So here we go. Now I'm going to pour it in and you see the, the leaves aren't flushed down but the weight of the batter will help to make it fit. Okay. And this rises a little bit, but not too much. So I usually fill it about three quarters of the way up. Okay, now I'm adding more batter. Okay. I think this is enough. Now you cut the leaves all around. And this is a special pan that I got a long time ago from Thailand. You can buy these if you ever travel to Thailand, India, or any place in Southeast Asia. They all use these pots. I like these pots because they have no handles 
and the cover fits perfectly on it. So that's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this and we're going to put it in a steamer, bring it to a boil, the water, and steam it for six hours. Okay, this is my steamer pot and you have boiling water in here and then I have a little cake rack to put it in. Okay, the water is boiling. So now I'm going to lift the pot into it, onto the rack. And there's about two inches of water. And like I said, bring this to a boil again and then lower the heat. Now you're going to simmer this for six hours. So then you put the cover on like this and put it on the stove. So this go has steamed for six hours. That's how long it takes for it to all solidify. But it was too hot to take out of the pan. But while it was hot, I sprinkled se toasted sesame seeds on and pressed the hung jiao or the red date in the center. The leaves have shrunken down, but I want to make it look nice. So now I've taken it out of the pot. And you can see, if you do a good job, nothing will leak out. The leaves hold it perfectly in place. And the pot is fairly clean. So now I'm going to trim off all the excess leaves so it looks more presentable. And you can take this to your party or your, serve it to your family for dinner. And everybody will love this. They all wait for it. And if there's any leftover, people cut it up and they want to take a piece home. So the leaves, you see now, it'll be much nicer. So banana leaves work very well. And you don't have to grease the leaves. It doesn't stick. Okay. So there you are. This is how it, it looks when it's done. Nice and brown. And remember when I just mix the batter, it looked really sickly, like a whitish color. But as it steamed, it gave more color. And that's the way it should be. Now let's see how heavy this thing is. So I'm going to put a plate on. And it's at zero right now. So let's put the go on it. So let's put it on. And my goodness, it is six pounds. If you were to buy this in the store, I don't know how much they'll charge you. I would say maybe 50 to $75 for this. And it's well worth it when you saw all the time it took to make it, although it's not very difficult. And not many people know the secret. And usually when I go to our family dinners at home, I'm the only one that brings a homemade go, and everybody's so happy. Some people buy it from the stores. And they're usually very small and they're very hard to cut, like I said, because they're too soft. But nobody makes it like me that has the coconut milk and the coconut. And it's so rich and so good. Everybody wants mine first. Now, I've never given out this recipe because I've been working and tweaking on it for the last 40 years or so. So when people ask you where you got it from, you say, I got it from Hawaii's Pickle Lady on YouTube. And you can make it too and pretend that it's your recipe. So this go is so delicious. So I'm going to cut some and you can make it. It's really guaranteed foolproof because like I said, I've been making it every year, once a year. And everybody wants to know how to make this. And those of you who are away from Hawaii especially, or you're in Hawaii, but you never learned how to do it from your grandmas or your moms, now you know how to do it. And just follow my video and you can do it. So let's cut a piece and you can see how soft it is. Although we just took it out of the steamer and people will not believe that you're able to cut it on day one. And you can cut it in wedges like this. And always use a plastic knife because a metal knife will stick like crazy. Okay, of course the mochi is sticky itself, but you still can get it apart. The first piece is always the hardest one to get out. But you see, it's manageable. Okay, you can take it out like this 
It's kind of tricky, the first one. And don't eat the leaves, whatever you do, okay? Now, you just put it on the plate. And when you serve it, don't try to layer each piece on top of each other. When you put it, if you want to put it on a platter and serve multiple pieces, it's not a good idea, even if you put wax paper in between because it'll stick. So it's better that each person comes to you and you cut a piece and give it to them in a plate. Otherwise, it'll be a sticky mess and you can't get it apart. So, make it for your friends and your family. And let's try it and see a piece. Mm. Very good. Sticky. Not too sweet. So if you have a big piece like this, to me it's kind of big. It's very filling. By the time you cut and give everybody, um, it'll all be gone pretty much. So remember, if you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button, comment, and consider subscribing. And don't forget to click that bell notification so that you can be notified every time we make a great video like this one. Yay! So if you have any comments, let me know and any requests too. So thank you for watching. Mahalo.